and Frank Newbeck and Frank Newbeck and Frank Newbeck and I want his name to be heard over and over and over again because what he did for this school was extraordinary. Belthouse is an interesting story. My, the best friend in my life, and, and somebody whom I miss every day, Johnny Zeller and I, uh, were out to lunch one day, one hot summer's day, and there was a, um, a used furniture kind of junk store in the uh, east side of town. And out front, there was some used furniture and stuff, and there was a, there was a locomotive bell. I stopped the car. I said, what are, we, what are we doing? I said, we're going to buy that bell. And he said, what, 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 why? And I said, we're going we're gonna to use that at the school. I can, I can see that as something that would be really cool for the kids to do. At that point, we had an eighth grade class. They were about to graduate, and we wanted to do something uh, to commemorate. And so the, I, I, I thought the bell would be something that would be kind of a gift. To, uh, to them. So I bought the bell. I think it was like 75 bucks. At, at a PTO meeting, I told them, I said, this is what I'm kind of envisioning. I said, I'm going to have the eighth graders come and get some cinder blocks, pour some cement, and, and put, put the bell somewhere. And, and I think it was like a Thursday or Friday. Uh, Mr. Landy, there's a Mr. Newbeck here to see you. I said, Newbeck. Um, so I checked my directory and I said, oh, I, that's Sharon Newbeck's husband, must be. So Frank came in and he had a roll-up sheet of paper. And he said, Mr. Laney, I'm Frank Newbeck. I shook hands with him. He said, I want to show you something. I saw the bell tower. I just about fell off my chair. I said, when can we have this? <laughs> I said, graduation was like five weeks. He said, I can, I can help you do this. But he said, I can't do the whole thing myself. I said, well, let, I, I said, let me see what we can do. I said, uh, you know, well, we had a, uh, Kate Davis's, I think it was her father who was in the cement business. So I got him to, to and somebody bought the, the, the poles. And um, we're moving towards our first graduation. And then one day, we, we, I got to have the bell, I got the poles, but then there, Frank had drawn this this rather complex piece that was wrought iron between that tied it all together. And one day he comes rolling up in Sharon's brand new BMW. <laughs> and Johnny and I go out and Frank says in his frank way, he says, I got your I got your piece of iron work here. He said, I got it done in North Carolina. And I look in the back of the car and there it is. And he said, uh, let's, let's get it out of the car. Well, well wouldn't you know, we, we tore right into the headliner of Sharon's new car. And Frank said, oh, don't worry about it, it's nothing. <laughs> and my mom was not too happy about that because dad, for his entire life, every vehicle we had was a multi-purpose vehicle, whether it was a convertible or a sedan or whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, another testament to the fact that the construction of this school was very hands-on, by everybody. You did whatever you had to do in order to make the thing happen and make it come, come together and, and sometimes literally to make it function. And when the media center was built, that was to me was just an, an extraordinarily iconic moment. This is another example of the kids saying after we got the, the high school building built, they said, well, you know, Mr. Laney, we don't have a library. <laughs> school needs to have a library. That's the heart of the school. How do you argue with that? So I called Frank and said, you know, I said, I hate to do this to you, but oh, that's fine. He said, let's meet, let's meet at Spanky's for lunch. So we go to Spanky's, it's, just anno it's noisy and crowded, and he takes out a piece of, he, didn't even, he forgot his paper, he had, a, and he had a big manila envelope, and he had his drafting pencil. 
He says, what do you need in this? You know, obviously you need a library, but what else do you need in it? So I started running the list. Frank, I, I, you know, I got the gymatorium, I like the Morris Center, but wouldn't it be nice to have a more formalized theory? Okay, fine. How many kids? Well, I said, you know, we really don't have a master plan, but, you know, maybe 250, so you could, all right, 250. He's, he's writing these things down. And before I finished my hamburger, he had drawn slices of pizza. And he said, and I said, well, what's, what's this big slice over here? Because he didn't, he said, I don't know, I'll figure it out. And I think, again, it was like another week, a week and a half, and suddenly I had a mock-up, a drawing of what this, what this rough vision was and what, what this thing that he created, which was so extraordinary. Well, he did it. It was amazing to see it going up. I realized that Frank's vision was that this was going to be the centerpiece, as it, as it, as it should be. A, a media center should be this, the heart of the school. And he said, well, this is, this is kind of the demographic center. This is going to be the center of the school, and then everything else is going to go out from around it. Schools can be very flat and wooden, if you just think of them in terms of boxes and, and school schedule, and how many boxes do I need, and how many teachers do I need to fill those boxes. But when you start to do something that's iconic and different, and of course, that's what, what Frank Newbeck was able to do. Frank took your aspirations and your dreams of excellence and, and spirit of the place. And he turned it into something that was real, that was just incredibly real. And just feel a little drier in the rain, a little warmer in the cold. I mean, it was just amazing.